Kia just keeps crushing their designs. And here we have a 2025 Kia K4. It replaces the Fortis. What we're going to do in this video is, of course, we need to check out this stunning design. And I'm also going to put some different wheels on it just to show you what the wheels can do to a car design. When we switch these out, it becomes a very cool looking car. It already is. But before we jump into Photoshop and have a look at the front side and rear and also the interior, let's have a look at some of the spec and tech from uh, this article from Car and Driver. So 2025 Kia K4 sedan has more room and more features than the Forte. It's also uh, a few inches longer and wider than the old Forte. It will go on sale second half of 2024 in the US. You have five trim levels. You have the LX, LXS, EX GT line, and then you have the GT line turbo. However, the powertrains here is what I'm a little bit disappointed in. When you have a cool design like this, you want to have a nice powertrain to go with it. And I'm not sure about what we have here. So the lower trims, Still have the same powertrain as the Forte, a 147 horsepower, 2 liter inline 4 and a CVT transmission. The GT line turbo comes with a turbocharged 1.6 liter inline 4, bumps it up to 190 horsepower. However, if you compare it to the old Forte GT, this is a drop by 11 horsepowers. And it doesn't make sense to me since this is also a bigger vehicle than the old car. You also have an 8 speed automatic now instead of the six-speed manual or the seven-speed dual clutch automatic. Same thing there with the transmission. I'm not sure if uh, if that's a good change or not. I'm gonna have to wait until I actually drive this car. So it increases of nearly three inches in length and two inches in width, meaning that if you put, as I said in the beginning, if you put the right wheels on this car, it looks like a very high-class car. You have the GT line in these photos right here with the 18 inch wheels. Nothing wrong with these, but I do think they look a little uh, weak for, for the overall design. Now in the interior, you do have uh, two screens, 12.3 inches, which seems to be the standard in this layout, as you can see right here. More on this also in Photoshop. The good news here is that you have a smaller five inch screen that operates the climate controls. And I do love when car companies does that. I, do, I still wanna see physical buttons for it, but if we can't have that, I like when they put a separated screen dedicated to the climate settings. And have a look at this cool design that we have in the taillights here. So you can expect this to uh, have a slightly higher starting price than the Forte, which starts at $21,145. Now the cool thing here is that we're actually going to get this one. The Kia K4 hatchback is confirmed. Uh, for the US. I don't have any high resolution images of this car, but you can see it right here. I do think this as well looks very, very cool. Pretty much the same taillights as the sedan, uh, but of course with a hatchback layout in the back. Now looking at this design. So let's jump into Photoshop here. First of all, have a look at these sketches. And uh, I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but if you want to be a car designer today, I think the, the way you want to go is to go still to this day. I've said it for about two years. But you might want to have a look at uh, Korea and what they are doing over there. South Korea with Kia, Hyundai, they just come out with some very cool looking designs. Look at how planted this looks. I mean, this is of course the sketches here. So it is going to look a little bit more planted than <laughs> the production version, obviously, just to sell this design. But I do think these sketches are super cool because I still have a sense that this was maybe sketched by hand. You can see the side view here as well. Very nice line and sloping roof line. We also have a very interesting feature that Kia likes to do on pretty much every single car. And that has to do with this area. More on this when we look at the, uh, the real car. I do like the shoulder line here because it goes in very geometric shapes but still look very dynamic. It's not something that's very easy to do. Here you can see the rear end with these new taillights. It seems to be a um, trademark for Kia these days to have these very thin LEDs connecting to some thicker pieces in the end corners. And the interior, last but not least, very cool sketch here. You can see the dual 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster right there in the infotainment screen. So let's jump in and have a look at the real thing and compare it to the old Fort and ju just have a look at the differences between these two designs. This is a brand that has, oh, Kia has always been confident in its design with the Tiger Nose design that we've had since I do believe uh, 2006 with the Kia Key. 
concept when that first came out and introduced the tiger nose in the front end. I still like this Forte design. I do think it looks very sporty and super sleek. This is definitely a design that you can see was sketched by hand because we have all these beautiful lines in the body work connecting every line that we have in the front and then have some connection to the side and also the rear end. But look at the new one here and just how chiseled. It looks like it's been carved out of a, you know, a piece of stone or something, this design. I love what they did with the front end, with these new headlights that seems to be a, uh, again, a signature for, for Kia to have these very thin LEDs with some curvatures and some corners in it, looking very chiseled. You can still see that we have the tiger nails intact, very, very subtle in this case. You can see this trim piece, how it dips down, this uh, silver piece in the front end in both the top part and then you have the lower section here as well. Still. The tiger nose is there, but I do feel like Kia is maybe transitioning away from the tiger nose. It's done its job now to implement a strong uh, design DNA for Kia. Maybe it's time for something new. And then we have these chiseled side fenders and muscles over the, the rear axle. So let's have a look at the different wheels that I would like to put on this car. So if we, if we look at these wheels, they look totally fine, but let's just see what it looks like when we slap on some uh, sportier looking wheel. It just looks so cool. It totally, this is a good example of what wheels can do to your car. So remove this, this is the before, and then you have the after. I just think it looks fantastic with these wheels on here. So well done, Kia, with this design. Now looking at the side view, I do believe uh, this is also a, a view you can clearly see the new design language from Kia. We have a static shoulder line in the old Forte stretching from, you can see the corner of the headlight here going all the way back. If we sketch this out, you can see that it connects to the corner of the taillight there as well. We have sort of a connection in the lower section as well. This upswing doesn't really connect with this line, but it has almost, if you continue this line, it's going to connect up to almost the same corner up here. We have a pretty typical sedan shape for this design, looking still very good for the age of the Forte. It's still a nice looking car, but this just takes it into a completely new level when it comes to design identity, perception of quality in the build. And this is what I wanted to talk about, this area right here. Just look at how abruptly this greenhouse ends in the rear. And Kia has this tradition to always put a piece of trim that sticks up somewhere near the D or C pillar in every single car that they have right now. If you, if you see a key out on the road, you want to look for that. Further down low, we do have this uh, shelf at the bottom carving out some more of this volume. I do love this line as well, this vertical line that sticks up into the bodywork because this now has a clear connection to this vertical line and they sit in the opposite sides and this sits in the upper part, this sits in the lower part, creating a nice dynamic for this specific design. And you can also see the muscles here going over uh, the rear axles into this nice trunk in the rear and still pretty traditional uh, sedan uh, proportions. You can see just how sharp the graphics are both in the front and in the rear as well. These wheels, as I said, looks cool, but I still wanna, would probably switch those out because as I said, just having a different set of wheels onto this completely transforms everything about this design. Now looking at the rear view before we have a look at the interior. So the old 40 was, it felt more organic. It felt more human, I would say, in its styling because we do have all these beautiful hand sketch curvatures all over the car, which makes it feel a little bit more organic, as I said, compared to the new one, which is super chiseled, has this more robotic feel to it. Here you can see the treatment of the uh, greenhouse, how it comes down here and then it just cuts and then we have this piece. It feels like the greenhouse is, is a separate part. The roof here is a separate part of the rear window. This feels like the proper metal work of the design. And then the greenhouse feels like something that was added onto the car afterwards. So I think it's a very, very cool and specifically unique design language for this K4. You have a nice sort of almost half ducktail. It does have a little bit of an upswing here in the rear end. And these taillights, again, Kia, having these big thicker pieces at the end connected with smaller, thinner LEDs connecting here to more thick piece and then going into a thin piece here. What I do like here is that we still have 
a lot of uh, chamfers going on. We have one chamfer right here. We have another chamfer up here, creating a nice housing for the key graphics in the rear end, which is of course uh, the taillights. And I do think they did a fantastic job overall with this exterior design with these very sharp lines in the front that fades in this area and then comes back very sharply in the rear end as well and still have a connection to the front corner of the headlight and also the front, uh, the, the rear corner of the taillight right here. Now last but not least, this interior. So the old one looked pretty good. I do think it was a solid looking interior for the old Forte because we do have what I like to see in cars today, which is becoming less common and that is to have, you know, a housing around the gauge cluster, analog clusters. I totally don't mind that at all because we still have this a little display in the middle looking nice. The steering wheel looks clean as well. You have a sort of, uh, I wouldn't call this well integrated. It, it's very rare to find an infotainment screen today that is well integrated in the overall interior. Just, it seems to be, it's not an easy thing to do because this is such a static piece of design with everything else going on, with all the curvatures that goes on in the car overall in the interior. It's very hard to have a element like this that is so static feel like it's part of the design. I think Kia did a sort of decent job with this with these angles that we have on the side and it also doesn't stick up too far into the view for the driver but further down we did have the uh, physical controls for the climate control settings. Dual climate controls here as you can see one for the driver one for the passenger. I do wish we still kept something like this in the new one maybe with some new styling. So looking at the new one right here and this is a very unique layout for the the software that's within these two 12.3 inch gauge uh, screens because they said that they did have two 12.3 inch clusters and a five inch specifically for the climate settings and I wonder where it, I thought it was going to be down here but if you look up here this area is actually where the climate screen sits so in between the infotainment screen the 12.3 and the 12.3 inch gauge cluster I don't think I've ever seen an integration like this. Audi usually normally has the screen down here as a separate piece. So this is a very unique and cool integration of this specific setting. Again, even though I wish they could create something down here that hangs down here with the knobs and dials, I would much rather have that than this. But it's still a unique and new integration of the climate control settings. Overall, this interior Again, I think, I think they, they, they stepped it up a little bit when it comes to the styling to make it more modern. And modern these days, uh, some people might like it, some people might not, but modern these days means minimalistic styling. And that is exactly what's going on here with the Kia. Even though this doesn't take it to this boring, sterile level of uh, minimalism, I, I still think this has a clean interior with these lines, with the vents going down here, different uh, materials. We have a couple of physical toggles here and buttons, as you can see. And the steering wheel itself looked pretty solid as well, even though I do prefer the sportier uh, Ford uh, three-spoke uh, design that we have here. Overall, I'm excited what Kia is doing right now with their entire lineup because they're creating such cool and unique designs. Every time Kia comes out with a new car, it's exciting to see how they implemented these small features that we're used to seeing now. For example, the LEDs with the thick, different thicknesses and also you have the C and D pillar styling on the side. How they implement those in different ways for every single model that comes out. I do think this is a huge step forward even though it does have this more robotic look compared to the old Forte.